Welcome everyone, this is the FX Masters program, lesson 10. We're going to continue talking a little bit more about the instancer. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we can still do with it. Uh, we're going to take the example, well, this, we're going to take topics. Let's say topics again from Maya Dynamics 1. Particularly, okay, of the FX, uh, FX Power User Program 2017, just getting complicated with these names. Okay, so this portion of the case of level one, let's say, mixed with topics from the Planet Earth effect prototyping section, right? Particularly when we talk about the, um, well, the sea lions. There's a portion of the video which I'm not going to use as a reference yet because I don't want the lesson to get too long. But eventually, you know, and, and the assignment will be to give me uh, a behavior that is interesting using this little guy, which uh, he will be in the FTP very soon. I bought him this weekend. Um, you can see that he has a rough, okay? I didn't do it because um, I'm, I'm kind of spoiled. I don't really like doing um, animation, but he does have a, he does have animation. So it's ugly, but that's what he came with the model. So. It does the trick. If you want to make it uh, better, by all means, go ahead, put some joints in them and animate it better. But the good thing is that it has a nice texture. You can also modify textures if you want to make it a little nicer. But he is right here and he has animation. So what I did with him is create 2000 sea lions that has this kind of motion. I know that some people say, well, they look like fish, and yeah, that's fine. I'm just, I'm not doing anything, uh, I'm not comparing to anything real, any live video. I'm not trying to mimic anything. I'm just trying to, you know, use the tools that we have and and find interesting examples for me to do in class. So I have this. This could be sea lions, it could be fish, it could be krill, it could be anything you like. And you're welcome to do whatever you want. Always my courses will include geometry and, uh, you know, I try to give you something interesting to use. So there we go. So I did that. The difference between this and the previous lessons with the instancer is that this is the first time we're going to use animated geometry. I know that some of you have done it already uh, because I've seen the, some of the things you publish in the group. So it might be this might be easy for you, but I have to talk about it. So there we go. I'm going to keep that as a just reference for now. And I have that. So how do I instance? geometry that is animated into particles but the answer is simple I mean you you can uh, but you can uh, you can just instance it if you want to I mean it's no 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 big deal you can just grab the geometry and instance it you, you know you can just create let's say an emitter you put it there for example okay here are my particles I can grab this guy, go to the instancer, put the options, here's my seal, whatever you want, and the particle shape one, and hit create. Let's see if it took it. it. Didn't take it. Let me just double check on my particles. Under my instancer tab. Okay, here's my instancer. Sometimes it doesn't take the geometry, it's just kind of stupid. You just grab it again, grab the instancer, add it, and now you have these guys. And if you see, it's only 48 frames, but they're not animated. I'm using 48 frames because that's the bit of the animation that I like about this. Probably if I use, let's just say 10 times more. You see, he gets static. So we're gonna do a, a bit of preparation. The point is that, <laughs> it looks funny. The point is that um, these guys, you see they're not animated. One second, just my, my phone gets me distracted sometimes. Okay, so the, the geometry is not animated on the instances. It's animated here, but it's not animated there. And all you need to do is just grab, you can see that it changes frame by frame. So it seems like, 
It's interesting, huh? Well, I was going to say, you need to grab the instancer. You need to go into, and let's say, this is fine. This is fine. So it should be okay. You know, it should carry on the animation. But for some reason, it doesn't want to do it. Or at least it may be something that is just the way it's displaying on my computer. Let's just try from here. You can see that it's not really doing what you want. And eventually, once once you get it to work, it will just, uh, you see, it's just, a, it's just a matter of display. So it, it will carry the animation, but you need to kind of like update it every frame. It's kind of stupid. My point with this is that all the animals will have the same animation. So it will, it will, it will look more robotic. It's impossible to make it look more robotic. That's not really what you want in any situation, I think. Unless you're carrying, if you're doing like a, I don't know, Beijing Olympic game ceremony opening where everybody moved the same thing at the same you know rhythm or a choreography I don't know it could be very few situations where you want to have the exact same animation um, what you really want is to have each one of them have a different rhythm let's say or a different pick a different point in the animation and move from there you can see that if here it doesn't you cannot really you know, of course, there's, there's many ways this can be improved, obviously, but um, but you don't really feel that all of them moving the same way. One one is the tells to the left, the other one's to the right. So it's, you see, it's, it's different. So how do we do that? How do we randomize that into um, you know? How do we add that functionality? Well, cool. What I'm gonna do is um, prep my geometry first. You know, that's always the most important thing. So let's do our pre-flight check, like I said. Let's just make sure that this guy is doing what he's supposed to do. And he's in the right position with no history, blah, 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 right? Okay, so he's at the center, which is fine. But the center of gravity, which I, I want to call the center of gravity, because that's the point where uh, the particle is going to be placed and the forces are going to be applied. So right now, the forces are going to be applied to the belly. And technically, the head is will be the one that dictates where it's supposed to go. So what we need to do is, remember, move the pivot point to where you really want it to be. In this case, we can, can be here, let's say in the center of the eyes. I think it's good. And let's say that that's the point where, you know, the, the, all the decision making and all the turns and everything is going to be from this point, where you want to grab it and pull him. So that's cool. If that's the case, then you need to move him to the center. So let's just place him right there. And he's facing the x-axis, which is good. So this guy, for now, is fine. So I'm just going to go in and freeze my transformations. Always check your animation just to make sure it doesn't break. Okay, so that's good. Another thing, he his animation uh, is 48 frames. I mean, it's not 48 frames, it's like 80 frames, right? Let's just see. 71, 70 frames. Um, in my case, I'm going to find a loop or a loopable point. It should, this should be loopable. I bought it, uh, I bought this geometry and it made it. So it should have a point where it loops. So if I say 70 frames, which is what it's giving me here, let's see what it does. So it goes. So it has a bit of a jump. Let's say, let's see if we put 69 frames is better. It has a bit of a double whammy thing at the end there. You can judge any range you like. I, mean, I don't like this. Well, I don't know. It's up to you. I had it set in my test of 48. The more frames you have of original animation, the better it will look, obviously. Yeah, it still has a bit of a... That's not bad. Then, you know, you need to find a, a sweet spot. You know, obviously, if you're in production, you will send this back to an animator and say, do your job correctly and you give me something loopable that works. Um, but for now, you know, we need to solve problems. And this is, a, this is something that will happen to you. If you buy the geometry from somewhere, some website, uh, it, it could come with nice animation, but if you don't have, you know, 
something that is loopable perfectly, you need to you know deal with it. This could work. Or if you like, then just use the whole so 70 frames, I think it was. Let's just see what happens if I do 71, 71 frames. I just want to see. Oop, no, no, absolutely not. Let's say 67 frames. No. So you see that animation is a bit bad, <laughs> terrible. No, I don't like that either. So I'm just going to stick to my to my 48 frames. Another thing I see this, uh, the model comes just like this. This is just like if you're, if you're imported. Obviously I just assigned the textures to it, but I see that it's, I don't have any animation. Okay, before frame 10. So I'm just like start, starting my, my animation at frame 10, going all the way to frame 48. I think it's okay. I don't know if I try 40. So I'm just trying to see if I can minimize the little jump that you have there. That's better. Well, I don't know. I'm just going to stick to, let's say, let me think 47 frames. I think it's okay. I'm not going to spend much time doing this. You'll find a sweet spot if you can, if you want to reanimate them, then go. All right, so that's cool. I have my geometry in the right place with the right texture with the right orientation with no transformations and i pick the cycle that i want so this is what i'm going to use i'm going to give this i'm going to save it as c lion let's say c lion ftp this is what i'm going to send you guys although uh, you know i think it's good it's a good idea no you know what I'm not going to send you this file. I'm going to send you the one that is starting one. You have to do all the, the steps with me. So you have to set your pivot point. You have to move it, delete history. So well, anyway, I'm going to have, have this for myself, but I'm going to give you the other one. Okay. So in the textures, of course. All right. So I got my geometry in place. Okay. So the steps that you need to follow next um, is, is new for, for the instancer. If you want, if you're lazy, then you will instance this one guy, which is animated, and you saw the result. All the the par particles will carry the same animation, exactly the same. So it will look terrible. If you want to randomize it and have the, the each particle have a different start time, that's why it's so important to have a cycle. See, an animation cycle, because you want you know them to start from anywhere within these 48 frames, but it will you know the motion will look correct. But they just the, the starting point will be different. So what you need to do for that is to duplicate this geometry, yes, on every frame of the cycle. Usually, okay, cycles last 24 uh, frames, just one second, normal. This is a 48 um, frame cycle, so you will have to duplicate this guy 48 times on every. So I mean, on every frame. So you're gonna have to grab this one, which is the original. You're done. Go to the next frame and duplicate it. You can see them here. Go to the next frame and duplicate the original. Again, you go to the next frame and duplicate the original again. And you know, this could get tedious. If it's 48 frames and you want to do it every now and then, then you're fine. Just do it. It takes a minute probably. But if you're going to be doing this a long, long time, you know, many times, and it's a, it's a long cycle, let's say a 200 frame cycle, then it's going to start getting annoying, right? So I'm going to use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about Mel. I know that in the lesson, the previous lesson, we, we talked a bit about Mel, and probably, you, you know, got some stomach ache. It was simple. And this is simple as well. I'm just going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a script, okay, to, to carry this thing. So... But how do we do this? Mail scripting, like I always say, is something that you have to use in specific situations. This one, it could be useful probably to have a little script um, that will give you duplicates based on the timeline that you have here. Okay, so, well, with that in mind, then uh, you need to be very careful. You don't, don't, you shouldn't script everything you do. People tend to overuse it, and that's when you start losing time and losing money and suffering, right? 
But I think, well, is, is like, I, like I said in the previous lesson, sometimes you just like to throw your curveball and, and confuse you a little bit and let you be and figure it out. Um, so this is something we're going to do. It's a little bit more, um, I, wanna, I don't want to use the word complicated, but it's a little bit different than what we did in the previous lesson. This has nothing to do with particles. This is just taking a task, and that's what mail scripting is good for, taking a task that you're going to be repeating many times and do it automatically for you instantaneously pretty much. So you, as you get further and deeper into the courses, you will get more comfortable doing these kind of things, and you will start finding your own uses. A very good way to learn how to script is the Maya help for the scripting reference of mail commands, which is right here. Keep this handy. And also, it's a very good uh, way, a uh, very good way to learn to have, to keep an eye on the script editor, what is printing. So if you want to learn how to, you know, do this task, or what is my, what's Maya doing when you duplicate and select and all those things, then it's a good way for you to see what's happening here. Maya tends to print everything. So right now you see I selected the seal and it actually wrote for me select dash r. This is what Maya is doing in the background, let's say. So that selected. If I want to duplicate it, you can go edit, duplicate, for example. And look, Maya writes duplicate dash r r and it gives me a result. And in here, it's right here. Yeah, so if I select again, it shows me again how I select it. If I move forward one frame, you don't see anything here. But Maya is actually writing something. Just Maya cannot show you, doesn't want to show you everything in here because it gets too convoluted. And this is meant to be used for debugging and you know it's very quite useful actually this. But if you don't see Maya printing something that you're doing, then you'll have to go to history and click on echo all commands. This will force Maya to do Print everything is doing. It's way, as you see how this will, you know, you can get filled with text very quickly. I'm gonna go for one frame and done. I'm gonna turn it off because I don't want to have many things. It's just to see what it did. So it showed me this. It showed me this. Play button step forward. You see, so I'm doing one step forward here, and Maya is already telling me what it does. Those are the steps that I need in order to, you know get my um, repetitive task done. So what I'm gonna do is grab, for example, these two things. I'll copy them and paste them down here in my working area. And I'm also gonna need this guy, for example. Those are basically the three things that I need to do as many times as frames I have here on my cycle, in this case, 47. I'm going to clean things up a little. You can clean up here. Be careful. If you click the little eraser on the two, I'm going to delete this. If I click it on the, you know, there's one for the top, one for the bottom. You see? But if you want to be on the safe side, then copy. And then clear both. There. It didn't go away. That's good. It's, it's very smart. All right. So I have these steps. What I basically want to do eventually, ultimately, is to have a... A little script that I can just uh, select the geometry, run it, and then have my task done. I don't want to go step by step. And I want it to work on anything, regardless of the name, right? So basically, right now, this this three lines work for this item. So technically, I can just select these three things, hit play, and guess what? I have a duplicate, and it went forward one frame. We can double check it. I'm going to delete this one. You see, I'm in frame 10. I have one seal only. And if I follow the steps that Maya told me, guess what? It went to frame 11, duplicated, and done. So I need to find a way to make this repeat itself as many times as needed to get to the end. And that's what we're going to do. But this is a good way to begin. You see, this is your first script. You didn't write anything, but this is a script, absolutely. So you can copy this and put it in your shelf if you want to, right? You can just grab this, middle mouse, drag it in here. And here you have a little button, right? 
if I save my shelves, my first button you see on my shelf called Lewis, and what that's gonna do, and once again, I'm gonna delete this, I'm going to go back, any, any frame you like, you can go to frame 28, for example, yeah? And you hit this, and guess what? It went to frame 29, it made a duplicate. So this is your first script that is not particle related. And it's gonna make you feel great, but promise me that you won't be overusing these things. I want you to be the best artist you can be. And because I know that and I have seen the best and I work with the best, uh, I, I know that you have to be careful with the scripting. You have to use it on the situations where it really needs to be. You can spend a day debugging. This is a very simple thing. But you can spend a day debugging something that if you do it by hand, it will take 20 minutes. So you have to always ask yourself the question, is that how many times in my day or in my life or in my career am I going to repeat this thing? Sometimes it's just one time or two or three. If it's three times and it's 60 minutes, it's one hour. And it's not one day or two days. So be very, very careful. Trust me. I've seen people lose their jobs, not directly because of a bad script. That's not the way it works. But they start losing time. If you start losing time and you're not as proficient and productive as your neighbor sitting next to you, then believe me, when it's time to renew your contract, it's not going to happen. You're going to find someone who works better, more efficiently. Careful. Very, very careful. But hey, let's, let's uh, look at the bright side. Then you're happy because you found a script that you can just grab frame 38 and just push your magic button and done, man. I got another seal. So that's great. I like it. Okay, so let's find a way to make this thing repetitive. It's, it's quite simple, actually. And it's, a, it's like a recipe that you will always follow. Um, you know, it's, it's not really... This is something that you can use it for many things. You can Once you learn, you grab the same script and just tweak it and use it for something else. And there's a few things that you always do in Maya when you're doing a scripting. Selecting things, duplicating, moving forward, grouping, parenting. Those, those, those things are quite, you know, common to use. So the first thing you need to do is, um, because you want this this button right now, okay? Let's say that I work, let's say that I create this guy, right? I'm sorry, but if I select this guy and hit this button, what I'm going to get is a duplicate of the seal. I'm not going to get a duplicate of the cylinder. So that's, and, and, and if I don't have a seal, if I change the name, let's say if I just call it seal, yeah? And if I want to use my magic button, right? Let's say that I want to go to this frame and I hold this, the magic is gone. Maya tells me error line one, no object matches the name first seal, first seal. Done. You see how, how quickly the magic is gone and how quickly you start to wonder what the hell happened? This is a script or a collection of instructions that Maya will use, but it's not really the script to use. That's just something to, just to get you excited, but it's not really, really what you want. What you want is something that you can just select, for example, this guy, run it, and it will make duplicates on every frame of the timeline, for example, just to be used as a tool for the instancer. Yeah? So, all right. So that's, that's really what we need to do. We need to make this thing uh, universal. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this super magic button that, that doesn't work for anything right now. I'm just going to delete it, and it's gone. I don't want him confusing my thing. Once I'm done, I'll probably place it there and just use it. All right, cool. So let's just go ahead and make something interesting. Let's make something based on the selection. I wanna select whatever geometry I have, I want, and then run it. That's really what I want. And keep this video as a reference, you know, because the description of the video on Vimeo On Demand will have what is covered in the course. You may not need it right now, but you might wanna come back to this lesson later you a bit more advanced so if you don't like this part um it's okay just skip skip through it because then i want to use this with the instance so this part believe me getting from where we are right now to this is very simple once i finish this script it's just something that i'm doing because i want to show you teach you something new uh, i don't have to i could have just replicated 48 times and it's easy actually that's what i did for this example getting this motion and that that's simple you're done you've done it before that's very very easy this part is going to take a little bit of time, not much. Anyways, okay, so what I want to do is just uh, re have Maya remember what I have selected. And if you see, 
when I select something, you see, it's selecting with a name. So what I need Maya to remember is this name, for example. Not as a P cylinder one, I'm saying is what I want Maya to remember the name of what I have selected. And it's text, right? It's not numbers, it's just text, P cylinder one. So if it's text, you need to use a variable. It's the same thing I was using in, in, uh, in the Maya particles, remember? When I was talking about the Tupperware with the three containers and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's the same thing. All I need here is a container that is capable of storing text because that's what I want to use. And the only one is called the string. Maya now is very beautiful. It's color coded and this is great. Back in my day, this was no colors and nothing. You had to wing it. So Maya is helping you. So every variable or type of variable, it has a color. Okay, and because you're you can you can have selected more than one thing, then you have to uh, specify the name, right? Like like we do with particles, let's just call it dollar sel for selected. Doesn't have to be this name; can be any name. But my helping you, you see, this is the type of variable. It could be a vector, it could be a float, it could be a string. Uh, the first time we use strings with text, this is the name of the variable. But you have to put these two guys. Because these two guys means, these two things, mean that you can have many things selected. You don't, this script can work for multiple things. You can have a seal, a penguin, and a cylinder. Select all three, run it, and it will work for everything. As it can work with just one thing, but it's just to save yourself the time later to change this. So right now, what these two things is, is just make it a container big enough for whatever I have selected. Simple. And what you need to do here is tell Maya, okay, let me just find the equal sign because I don't have light. I'm just it's kind of dark where I'm working right now. Okay, a bit better. Um, I need to find Maya to find a way to uh, list. And this is something that, okay, Luis, but how do you know that? LS-SL. That, so with practice and with this. So if I want to find a way to show me, okay, a list of attributes, ls tells you right now. ls is a command that returns the name and optionally the type, you know, the, the type of name of the objects in the scene. Okay, so you can find here a lot of flags that you can be using and at the bottom is cool because you can have examples of things, you know, uses of that. But if you don't want to read it, and if you don't want to read it, then then probably mail scripting is not for you. This is something that you need to keep open at the beginning when you're learning this all the time. If you don't want to read it, then if you still want a script and you don't want to read it, then that's what this video is for, right? That's what you're paying me for to teach you. So basically, ls is just list, okay? And dash sl is a flag that is right here. This is an alphabetical order, so it will help you. S L right here, you see. Dash S L is a short for I could just I could just have written selection. So basically, what this is saying is, take a container that can hold text. Call it this, make it resizable. Let's say as big as as um, it can hold many things, many levels. And that's going to be equal to a list of what I have selected. This is the Maya lingo. This is what I'm translating here for you. This is what Maya is reading when I read this, when I write that. And you will say, well, you know, I do I have to learn this? This is very complicated. You know, no. you will do this so many times that I think when, when you reach at some point, then it will write itself. Your fingers will just write it. It's simple. This selection. When you wanna when you wanna store whatever is selected in every script, pretty much every script that you find online or you do or you hear that it's based on something it has to be based on selection or something. So it's easier. It's always easier to select and run a script. So that's, that's pretty much step one for everything we do. The thing is that if I run this like that, Maya is not going to like it. Yeah. It's not going to like it because the way this works is that you need to tell Maya to evaluate this first. When you hear me, like I'm lowering, I'm not reading a script or anything. I'm just, uh, I can't see my keyboard very well. And there you go. I'm looking for these guys. These guys right here, when I put text of this, 
instructions. Okay, when I put these instructions inside this little guy and this little guy, it tells Maya to evaluate this first, to figure this out first, and then assign it here. So it's just an instruction to make this work happen first. If I run that, aha, uh -huh, so it tells me here, let me just think in here, invalid use of the word, well, yeah. I just have to change the name. Basically, my is telling me that I'm trying to redeclare this variable, which is, because I wanted to show you what happens if you make a mistake. Um, it made a mistake and it declared it with something else. So I need to change the name, basically. I'm just saying you're trying to use the same variable as a different type. So basically all you need to do here is just, if you make the mistake that I did, which I did on purpose for to show you, just change the name and run it again. Aha, the error is gone and Maya is giving me a result. Basically the result is what is stored in the Tupperware. And the result is P-Cylinder 1. Let's see if it works. Let's grab this guy and run it. Ha, huh. seal. Good, I think it's working. Let's make something else just to see if it works. You have to be curious, right? You have to experiment with these things. So there we go. So I got this guy selected. Let me run it again. And now it says become. You see? And what happens if I select all three? Then I run it. Aha. You have selected this cylinder, seal, and become in the right order. So you can see that what this line will do. And that's just a container of information, it's a topperware. Yeah? Okay, so I think we're fine. We're in good shape. Let's continue. So now I have Maya, Maya is able to remember what I have selected. Now what I, what do I need to do? Well, I need to find a way um, to move forward and repeat these steps as many times as I say. Meaning as many times as, as you have in a timeline here. So what you need to do is some you find a way to say to repeat something. And to repeat something, I mean a set of instructions, okay? You can just say four, right? Open parentheses. And this is again something you will have to learn. Dollar I, okay. And that's it. Let's say let's call this dollar I the beginning of my timeline. I'm gonna make this simple. And again, this is a message for my most uh, more advanced uh, students uh, without naming any names. I know that there are better ways to do this and to query these uh, items, but I need to do things simple and you can make it more complicated and share it, share it with the rest. But let's use I, okay, dollar I. Everything with the dollar sign is a variable. Okay, so I'm saying for dollar I, don't worry, I'm gonna explain this which is equal to 10 in this case, in this case, okay, because it's starting here, 10. Uh, this is the beginning of the instruction, because remember, I have to tell it, repeat these things, starting in frame 10 and finish it in frame 47, so you know, it has to go and, and run. This is called a um, iterations or a loop, right? So it's a loop, it's running, 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 as many, I have to specify when it starts and when it begins. Okay, so there you go. So, I equals uh, that, okay, the beginning frame. Then you need to specify an, an instruction and say, well, continue, okay, as long as dollar $i is less than, in this case, 47. Yeah. And then you have to say this, dollar $i, and then you put plus plus. And you close your parentheses. And you're saying, what the hell are you doing? You we're doing penguins last week and now you're typing all this crazy stuff and I don't understand. And it's fine. It's okay. It's, it's not as bad as it looks. Again, four means it's a loop. It's, it's something that is going to repeat itself for a period of, of time or of frames. Or you know. uh, This is the beginning. In this case, frame 10. It will repeat this thing as long as it's less than 47. Or you can do less than 48 if you want. Let's say this in 48. And this means basically go and start in 10, do it as long as it's 48, and every time you run this, add yourself one to this. 
So it basically will start in 10 and it will go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way to 48 or 47 in this case, because it's less than 48. So basically it's just my thing, okay, do whatever I'm gonna say next and repeat it itself uh, frame by frame until you reach, in this case it's not frame by frame, but it's just, well, basically that's the way to, to look at it and understand it better. Okay, so let's say that you did that You have to put all the set of instructions that you want within, sorry, within these guys, okay? This squiggly bracket thing. And basically here then you specify the instructions that you want to do. All right, so what do, what, what do I want to change in here? Well, the only thing I need to change is just this is not called first seal anymore. I want to select what I have selected here. So all you need to do is just put copy this, paste it, but be careful, right? Uh, um, in this particular example, I want to do this script to be working with one animated geometry and, and it's better this way. Uh, they said that you have three different seals, then it's easier to have a script that you will select one run it, select the other one, run it, select the third one and run it. Is Especially now that you're learning, you're, the, you're beginning with this. So what you want to do is just select the one item. So if you select one item, because this is a container, and it kind of looks like a container, right, like a Tupperware, you need to make sure that you select the first thing that you had selected. And there's where Maya becomes a little bit dumb in the sense of, that if it has only one thing selected, you still have to tell it to select the first. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm saying grab the container and pick the first thing. Remember from the previous lesson, lesson nine, where we had the list of uh, items on the instancer, the first item of that list was item zero, yeah? Let's say that you have three things selected like we had here. P cylinder one is item zero of this list, of this list. If I wanted to select the seal, for example, I will have to say here, select the second item of the list, which is this one. And as you can imagine, if I say two, I'll be selecting the cone. But because I'm suggesting you, and this is just a suggestion, to run these scripts on one item at a time, then keep it at zero. It's the easiest thing. All right, and believe it or not, you're done. You're done because then you're telling again, this recap, I'm saying, I'm gonna re delete this, delete this, I'm going to delete this one, and I'm gonna keep my seal that is animated. So what I'm saying here, okay, I'm gonna select my seal, and I'm gonna say, okay, remember the name of what I have selected and put it in this Tupperware, that can contain text, now, you will tell, you will do what I tell you, Maya, okay? Beginning on frame 10, ending on frame 48, and add yourself, so go one frame at a time, let's say, in this particular case. So, one second, yeah. Um, my phone keeps uh, distracting me. So, yeah, we do what I tell you, beginning on 10, ending on 48, and one, go one at a time. And this is the instructions that you're going to do. You're going to select what you have selected first, but make sure that it's the first thing on the list, the first item of the Tupperware. Then you're going to have, once you have selected that, you're going to duplicate it, and you're going to move forward one frame. Done. This is done, I think. We'll try it. How do you test it? Well, then you select your item, Select over all these things and run it. And guess what? Look, it did. It went forward all the way to the end. Okay, it duplicated everything. I have them here. I have from seal one to seal 38, which is perfect. Make sure that the last two are not the same. Yeah, this is fine. Beautiful, it works. It duplicated, it did everything, it printed all the steps, and there you go, there you have it. Now you can go ahead, if you want to, place it in here. 
save your shell. You can put a name uh, a name to this guy so it's easier to to see. Uh, the icon name is this. The icon label, I think you can just put. It doesn't it doesn't hold too much test. So you can put inst. I don't know if it's gonna take it. Let's see. Yeah, it kind of takes it. You see. So let's just do something like that. Yeah, it fits and save it. So that way you can recognize this from other scripts that you may have. So it did 38 copies of it. This is going to carry with you in every every time you open Maya. That's a good thing because if you keep it here, you might lose it. Or put it on a text file somewhere and save it. Let's see if it's true. Let's, let's find another, another scene file that has some animated geometry. I think I have the alien storm right here. Okay, he's animated many frames. I'm not gonna do so many of them, but let's see, let's try, let's select this guy. This could be a counterproductive exercise, we'll see, because he has joints and things, but let's see what happens. And run it. You see? And it's good because it's heavy geometry, so you can see what's happening. So it's going forward and forward and forward and forward. And it will do it until I stop Maya or until it reaches the end. So it's going to do 48 copies of this. There you go. Done. So I get my alien skin 1 to alien skin 38. So it's done. It works. I could instance this into particles as well. So I got all my duplicates. Let's see, you have another thing that I bought for the following lessons for you guys. I have a little zebra here. You can see this is for the next lessons. You can see what's coming. It looks good, huh? I bought it, uh, bought it last night. That and I bought an elephant. Okay, so I got 39 frames in here. Then all you need to change, and, and like I said, later I will show you more uh, interesting ways to, to do this thing here, but... All you need to change probably is just uh, in here. So I can just say 40. Grab this, select my thing, and then just run it. And there they are. There's my all my duplicates. So it does work. It will work with the elephant. This is also for you for the following lessons. Looking good. He's also 48 frames, so this is perfect. You can just put here 49. Grab your elephant. Yeah, you can just run it from here. There we go. Done. All my duplicates. You can be even more creative and just group them at the end, but yeah, it's all right. Just to, to begin to start with, just so I don't scare you too much, then this is good. But you can do many things. You can just grab them all and group them, change the name of the group. And that's something, if you want to experiment a little more, if you like mail scripting, as an assignment, you can run that. Add to this uh, grouping and renaming of the group. It's not, that, it's not that hard. Okay. Well, I don't know. I think I feel inclined to show you how to do the grouping and all that. Let's do it. You want to do it? Let's do it. I'm answering my own question. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to grab the C-Lion FTP, which is right here. All right, and let's add to just to make it a bit more interesting, a bit nicer, right? Let's add a couple more things. Let's find a way to group this animal. And the easiest way, okay, it will be to add a group, but not in this structure. If you put it in here to add a group, then it will just um, it will be annoying in the way where it will create groups for every time the duplicates. It will end up with main, as many groups as duplicates. That's not what you want. What I want to do here is just create a group. So I can just create a group. Um, just give me one second. Uh, I was going to create it from here, but yeah, empty group right here. It's just to get uh, this command because I'm lazy. It just makes an empty group with no name. So I'm just going to grab this. I create an empty group. Um, that's to start, right? 
you create the empty group. But the thing is that um, if I run this, if I just delete that and I run what I have, it's not going to do anything special. It's going to grab this and run it. And it just made actually, um, ah, perfect. I'm glad that I did this. It made, instead, it made <laughs> it made 48 groups. I mean, 38 groups, right? Because I made a mistake and I put it inside this loop. That's not really what I want. I want to put this outside the group. But whatever's inside, whatever's after this four is going to be repeated over and over and over again, you see? So that's not really what I want. I want to put it out here. Oh, man, one second. There we go. I want to put it right here. So it will select what is what it has. You know, I select my animal, it will make an empty group, and it will run the script. So that's different. That, that will do something different. I will just select it all, run it. And it does basically that. It will duplicate this as many times as we said before, and it makes a group, but it doesn't do really anything else. I need to follow more steps. I need to get more things happening here. So what I want to do is grab, let me just delete everything to start over. But you see that it's starting to work. You see how it started to do this? Um, what I want to do is something different. I just want to grab this, and I want to say string, yeah? And I'm going to call this group. And the group it also has to be okay with this item and I'm gonna make that an instruction so I'm just gonna say do this and why am I doing that why am I doing it this way basically what I'm saying here is I'm, I'm just giving the same order to make an empty group nothing nothing new okay it's making an empty group but it's remembering the name for later and you're gonna see why because it's not, it's not only making the group, it's going in, selecting the original seal, duplicating it, moving a step forward, and then here I'm gonna make an instruction to make it and, and place it inside this group. Okay, so how do I place something inside a group? If I run this, it will give me the exact same result as before. One group with nothing in it and 38 copies of my seal. But now I can just grab this, grab this guy and hit or go to edit and then you go to parent and you have this. Look what I'm doing. I'm selecting my seal. I'm selecting the group. Okay. So here, let me just show you these things here. Let me just copy this and throw it out here to show you. I'm selecting the seal. Don't worry about this, and don't worry about this. But I'm selecting the seal, I'm selecting the group, and I'm parenting. If I change this for any any number, let's say two, okay, and I run it on its own, and I run these three lines, and I hit play, look, two fell inside the group. So this is basically the instructions that I need. So I'm going to grab these three. I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to see what I need to change in here to make it work. So the first thing I need to do is select the seal that is um, that I want to parent. The cool thing is that once you duplicate geometry, it's already selected. So, for example, if I grab this seal, let me just delete this, everything, and start over. I'm going to delete all that. If I grab this seal, okay, and I just go edit and I go duplicate. The duplicate is already selected. So if I wanted to if I wanted to have a group and parent it, I just need to select the group and then parent. So this part is not really necessary. All right. Now I need to add, okay, to the whatever is already selected, which I know that is going to be the seal, the current seal that I'm duplicating. And I need to add the group, but the group is not called null one. It's called dollar group. And not only dollar group, it's going to be called dollar group. Sorry, I put it where it's not supposed to. Cut it here. It's going to be called dollar group. And remember that it has to be the first item of that list. 
and then you parent it. That's done. Let's see if it works. Delete it, grab your seal, grab everything, and run it. Aha, uh -huh, I made a mistake here. Let's see. No object matches the name. Okay, let me see what I did wrong. Do, do, do. I duplicated the seal. This is fine. So the group got created, which is good because it's easy. It's out here. I'm running this. I'm duplicating. All right. This is, I'm doing it on the fly. So let's try to figure this out together. You'll find it funny though, because the, the class itself of the instancing of these animals is easy. I just want to, it's more of a male scripting class. All right. So let's use the errors that Maya is telling me. Error in line nine. So this is the problem. And okay, let me see if I made a mistake. Well, everything looks fine. Let me just try something in here quickly. I'm thinking the Maya, even though it's selecting the object, the, the seal, the current seal, uh, is not really knowing the name. So it's selected, but it's not really adding it to the group. So it could be that because you can see it's out here. It's not really, it didn't get grouped. So it kind of got to the duplicate part and then it stopped right here. So it doesn't, doesn't really know what to do. So what I'm going to do quickly here is to do, is copy this line so it's easier. This line, I'm sorry. I'm going to throw it in here. And I'm going to get, I'm going to name this whatever. Selected. Selected object. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever I want. And just to make sure that it's, um, that it's remembering the name of whatever is selected. And now I can say select. Let's say dollar selected object and that's item zero. I'm just forcing it to, to remember what it has selected after it duplicates, to remember it, to select it anyway, add the group and then parent it. I'm forcing this and see if it works. That's basically what I'm doing here. Let's see if it works. Let's try, delete this too, select it run it aha uh -huh, another error same thing line 10 no object matches name it's like it's not remembering this guy here mm -hmm. so whatever i did here might not be necessary because it looks like more is just a matter of that doesn't really know who this guy is okay so if you wanted if you're having this problem right what you need to do or you could do is to ask Maya what is what what do you remember that is this the name you know what well, tell me what this is right so you can just say print and you can ask the name, whatever you wanted to print so tell me what this is let me see what let me see what it does if I just ask oops, I have double double sign here okay it didn't give me anything. He's going to place it down here. And I'm going to ask, run those two lines only. If you select, okay, this is a trick. If you select text and hit this guy, it will only evaluate what you have selected. Okay, so there is a problem in here. Warning, strict, okay, create empty group. It doesn't really like this thing. Okay, no worries. If you don't like the name, I want to try something different. Oh, uh, now, yes, now it works. Okay, so what, what happened here? Um, it didn't like the fact that, the thing is that I used the, the container, right? The two brackets to put them in here. That tells Maya, remember, that it's going to be a container as big as you want. And that, that was my mistake. This has to be done when you're selecting things because the selection can be many things. It could be, you can be, you can have selected a hundred items. So it has to be a container that can adjust to anything. But when you're creating a group, the result is only one thing. It's not a container that can be can bigger. So that was my mistake. I told Maya, well, create a group, which, which Maya knows already that the result is one item, one thing. And I said, well, make it in a container that can get big. But Maya doesn't like that. 
And because you cannot reuse the same name, I had group with the two little brackets and that was wrong, then I have to change the name to be able to fix it. So that thing, how do I know it'll work? Because you see Maya made the container, made the new group, and it printed the name. So I think it works. Let me just double check it. Let me delete this, delete everything. And only I'm gonna do is just, uh, I'm gonna run these two guys. It's gonna make a group and it should tell me the name of the group. Let's see. Okay, so it made an empty group and well, it didn't really tell me what, what it's called. But it's okay, let's try and let's see if it works. So this is called group two. So instead of being this, it should be this. Let's just try and see if it does. Let me just delete that guy, grab my seal and run it. Okay, again, read declaration of variable group two, shadows previous declaration, will be overwritten explicitly initialized. So this is, why is it doing this? One second. Yeah, this is really weird. This is a good thing about having classes that are live with you guys in class because, you know, you help me locate what my issue is. Uh, but this seems to be pretty straightforward. Well, I don't understand why it's not really printing. This is my loop. Yeah, it seems like it's really clearing the variable. I don't really understand why. All right, well, it's not no big deal. No big deal, I mean, because, you know, we can keep searching for this. So let me just, again, let me just try to get a print for group two. I want Maya to really tell me that he knows what he's doing here. So he's not really knowing. You see, that's that's the part that I don't really like. So what do we do? What do we do? One second. Let me try one more thing. And let me just try it and I'll tell you what I'm doing. Okay, let me just try this thing now. These three things. Let me just clear everything. So always, always clear your scene so you don't get, you know, confused with things that get created and all. Okay, I'm kind of liking this. Okay, so what did I do here? I like it because Maya finally told me what he's remembering. So Maya already knows what it finally knows what he's doing. Okay, so basically this stays the same. This creates an empty group and it's done. I don't really have to put it in the string anymore, but well, it doesn't matter. This could work technically like this. And let me just try it and then I explain if it's true. So like this. Yeah, it does work the same. Okay, so it's easier. Okay, now I explain. This makes an empty group. And I'm not putting it in a string anymore because I, I was using the string to remember the name, but it wasn't working. And you know my motto, I don't overcomplicate things, I don't panic, I stay calm and I find another way. If, the, if one path is blocked, then I go around, that's simple. So basically, okay, this makes an empty group and that's just to do this. If I click this many times, okay, it's making many groups. This just makes a group. Let me just delete them all. Okay, so first step makes a group. The second thing tells Maya just the same thing we have here. Just remember what is selected. Remember that when you create a group, it makes a group and the group is already selected. You see, it's blue. So with this line, I'm just saying, okay, remember what you have selected and that's gonna be your group. And then this is just for me to know if it's true, to print. So basically the second line, remembers and this line is just tells me it prints a name well same thing you can just run this many times and it's just printing the name null one this tells me that Maya knows what it's doing Maya has something in memory that has the name 
of the group. Now I can go in here and then just grab, the only thing I have to change is just grab this thing and place it in here. This should work. So the first thing remembers the name of the seal, the second instruction makes a group, the third instruction remembers the name of the group, the fourth thing is a loop, that you already know what it does. It will select the seal that you had originally selected, will duplicate it, okay? It will remember the name of the seal that you just duplicated. It will select it. Then it will add to that selection the group, and it will put it inside the group. And it will move forward and repeat, repeat, repeat until you reach frame 49. Let's see if it's true. And it's funny because when you know, you know, when you're doing these things a lot and you know Mel and you always, when you're going to run a script, you always say, let's see if it's working. <laughs> it's just something that you, you never know. It could be something broken or something. So select your CEO, select your text, run it, and A, it worked. It ran through my iterations. It made all the duplicates. It made the group. And it made every copy and it placed it inside the group. The only thing you can do if you want to is to rename this group in the same script. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So you can call you can call instances, for example, if it's something you're going to use for the instances. Um, so let's try it. Let's see what you can do. So remember, this thing will make a group. Done. And if you want to know what the command for renaming, for example, then you can grab it from here. Rename null to instances. I'm going to grab this, paste it, and I need to just do, well, I'm trying to complicate things a bit more for you. I think that's that's more interesting. Um, but I'm not going to put it in here. I'm just going to cut this, place it in here. So the group is not called null anymore. You know that it's, the group is selected right here. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And that's the name of the group. And yes, I'm going to leave it instances. When you put things in between quotes, it's because you're hard coding a name, a piece of text yourself. That should work. Let's grab the seal. Run it. Aha, I made a mistake. No object matches name, no one. Uh, da, 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 da. It does match the name because it's called null one. Oh, okay, it has been renamed. Okay, perfect. I, I like these things to happen. I love these classes when they're like that. Beautiful. So it's telling me Maya doesn't know what the hell is null one, but null one doesn't exist. But if you see, when you make a group, if I delete these two things, well, actually no. Before I delete that, let me just. Uh, I'm just gonna keep what Maya did for me. When you make a group, it's called null. Null means that it has no name. You see, null one. And it's funny because I run my script and I tell him to rename it to instances, which it did. But Maya tells me, I don't rem I don't have anything called null one. What do you mean you have anything called null one? I'm going to run it again. So you have the same mistake, the same error again. You run it and it says, why null one? Null one doesn't really show here at all. And it's fine. Of course, it makes sense. Because the name of the group when I create it is null one and it's being remembered right here. But then I change the name. So the name of the thing changed. So I need to find another way for Maya to remember the new name. And that's the one I need to use down here. So I can just copy this. And I'm gonna make it, for example, selected group two, for example. And that's going to carry the new name. So this is the old name. And this is the new name. And actually, but well, it's fine to keep it like that. And then what Maya is going to be grouping at the bottom is going to be the new name, group two. This will work. All right, let's see. Grab everything. Run it. And perfect. It did work. Maya created, okay, all my my copies. It made them, it put them inside a group called instances. You can call this whatever your name if you want to, and it is done.
Okay, so this lesson is extending a little bit, so I'm going to recap, close this lesson, and just do a quick one, just using the this example on the scene. So to recap, let's delete everything. This variable remembers, okay, this line remembers my the name of my seal, whatever I have selected in this case. It makes an empty group. It remembers the name of the group. It renames it, okay, from whatever it has to the word instances. It remembers the name. Then it goes into a loop that goes from this point to this point, okay, going one at a time. It will select the original seal that I have here. It will duplicate it. It will remember the name of the duplicate, the new one. It will select it. It will add the group with a new name. It will parent it. And it will step forward one frame. That's your script. So if you want that, then you can just... I can show you already. You already have a button with the name. So if you want to replace the code, then you can just grab it all. Copy it. Go to your shelf editor, okay, locate your script, which is this one, I believe. All right, here's the command. This is what I was doing before. Now it's a more interesting one that is doing a lot more stuff. You're done. And save it. And test. So grab it, select your seal, run it. Beautiful duplicates of everything inside a group called instances and everyone's happy okay so with this i'm going to pause this lesson so it doesn't get too long and then we jump into the next one which will be a short one just applying this into the this was the trickiest part of this class okay so see you in the next one thank you